here comes the most important data type in csr programming language and it is a string you cannot even imagine any kind of real application without using a string and a string is also the favorite topic in interviews as well starting from freshers to experienced even including 10 years or 12 years of experience you will get the questions from this string so make sure to understand the concept of a string in a very well manner so let's start the learning this string has so many things so we will cover this topic in multiple videos here in this video we will talk about the introduction about strings in c sharp programming language this string is a data type in c sharp programming language and it represents data in form of text and in the previous video we were talking about characters over there we were using single quotes but here we will use double quotes and inside the double quotes we can pass anything in the string let's understand how it will work if you will create a default console application in csr then you will get a program something like this here if you will notice something very carefully we are having something over here in double quotes so these are the double quotes and this is something that we have over here so this is an string over here so we are passing the data in form of a string if i will hold my mouse over here then you will see we are having class system dot string it means it is an string even if i will hold my mouse on this right line then you will see in the suggestion box we are having a string value as a parameter so whatever data you will pass over here that will be an string so even the default program of c sharp has a string so this is something very important let's understand how to declare a string in c sharp programming language to declare the string we can simply use system dot string this one let's say here i'm writing where one and here we have to use double quotes like this so this is my first string like this now you have to terminate your sentence by using a semicolon but inside this double quote you can write anything you can also remove this system like this and if we can simply use this string let's get one more variable this time i will use the small string and here i'm writing where to and here i'm writing this is second this is second string just notice something over here in the first line i'm using the string in caps and in the second one i'm using a string in small so what is the difference in between them talking about the functionality there is no difference this small string is the alias for this capital string so if i will right click on this string and go to definition you will see we are having the string class if i will right click on this small one which is the alias go to definition you will see we are still having the same class it means the string the small one is the alias for the caps one and it is always recommended to use this small one not to use this capital one so let's use this small one right this is how we can declare and assign the values in the string and just like the other types you can only declare it and you can assign the values after some time like this now here if i want to assign the values where one i can simply use abc and that's it you can also assign one single character over here like this but again it will be treated as the string if you will notice something very carefully this string is having so many characters over here so this is the first character this is the second character and there are n number of characters over here so internally how it works the string stores this data in form of read only collection of characters right if you do not know anything about collections that just assume that collection is a type that stores multiple data and here we are having this string although we are saying that this is only one single data but internally it will be stored in form of multiple characters so how it will work let's remove this thing and please focus on this concept very carefully so here i am having where to let's even remove this one as well run this application you will see we are having this entire string if you are talking about the collection and if i want to read only some specific part by using the index then i can simply use the square bracket and over here i have to pass an index this index is something that starts from zero we will talk about this index in upcoming videos where we will talk about some collections in the c sharp but here because this is a very important concept so i am talking about it so internally 
this entire string is stored in form of a collection of characters so if i will use the zero over here then we will get only this first character because the index always starts from zero so let's run this application and this time you will see we are having only t so it means the first value in this array is the t if i'm using the six over here then what should be the output zero one two three four five six this small s should be the output let's run this application we are having the small s this is how we can access some specific value in form of character from this particular string and because this is a collection so we can also apply a couple of things over here let's say i want to use a loop over here a loop is basically logic that is used to iterate all the elements of a particular collection if i talk about this particular line here we are passing the index manually now let's assume that we are having hundreds or thousands of elements in a particular collection then we have to pass all the index one by one but if i talk about this for each then irrespective of the length of this particular collection it will iterate through all of them so what we are doing over here is we are having this for each loop which is where x in where to this is the syntax of this particular for each what it will do it will run multiple times how many times that depends on the length of this collection so here let's say what is the length let's assume that there are n number of characters over here so this for each loop will run n times and that's how we can declare the body so if i cut it and paste it over here so the execution of this particular line will be equal to the length of this particular collection okay let's run this application here i'm just commenting this line and let's just run it here you will see i'm having all the characters one by one over here and this is a very great logic you can even apply for each loop for loop or while loop over this string now let's talk about the reverse concept so what we are doing over here is we are having the string and we are getting or fetching all the characters one by one but what if i'm having a collection of all the characters and i want to create a string from those characters can i do that yes i can do that let's see how to work on this concept so here i'm going to create a new array of character data type this is how we create the character like this so let's add few more of them over here d what we are doing is we are declaring something called array over here it is a type of character and there are multiple elements in this particular array there are one two three four four elements over here right now i want to create a new string by using this array how to do that so here i have to do it let's say i'm writing string string new where and here i have to use new string and here i can pass this var3 and that's it if i will use the console screen then let's remove this line as well and run it you will see we are having one single string over here we are not having all the characters one by one rather we are having an entire string so this is how we can get all the characters from the string one by one and we can also create a new string by using these characters now let's talk about some more interesting concepts over here i'm just going to comment all these lines like this even this one as well and over here i want to write something else so here i'm having one string which is where one and in this where one i want to assign some values let's assign it so this is and here i'm writing this let's save the changes and run this application then let's see what we have in the output in the output this time you'll see we are having some extra space this is not a regular space that is extra space it is basically the space provided by the tab so it means this represents a tab over here but what if i want to display all these values on my output screen i do not want to use them as a special one i want to simply treat them as the normal part of this string how to do that to achieve this kind of functionality we have to use some verbatim over here how to do that so before this string we can use an at the rate and now you will see the color of all these escape sequence is gone now this will be treated only the normal string let's run this application and this time you will see we are even getting these backslashes over here in this output 
So this is a very interesting concept. If you have to work with any kind of paths in your application, then you always have to use this at the rate before this string. Otherwise, you will get some errors over here, right? There is one more way. Instead of having this at the rate, you can also use one more backslash over here, like this, like this. Now just save the changes and let's run this application. There is no difference in the output. We are getting them as it is. And if you will notice something very carefully, here in the program, we are using these double slash values, but in the output, we are getting only one. This is because the first one is used to work with the second one. If you will remove any one of them, then they will be treated as the special escape sequence. But if you are using the double one, then they will work as a normal one. Now let's talk about multi-line strings over here. What if I want to define my string in multiple lines? How? A string where to like this. So this press the enter is see we are getting something which is called plus plus but I do not want to use that concept. I simply want to use like this. And if we we'll notice we are getting some error as well over here because this is not allowed. To work with the multiple line you have to use again this at the rate over here and this will work this time so here in the console dot right line if you are using the variable tool which is this one and you want to run this application then you will see we are getting this data in multiple lines right now we have something very interesting which is called as row string literals and this is the concept that has been added in c sharp 11 and to work with the c sharp 11 you have to use minimum dotnet 7.0 version in your system okay i have already installed dotnet 7.0 so here i can work with this new concept and what is this new concept so in this previous concept let's say i want to write my name like my name is nitis kosik and i want to display my name in double quotes like this then immediately you will see we are getting some errors right how to fix this kind of things let's use where one over here first concept is you can use one more double quote over here like this it will work just run this application and we are getting the value in the double quotes but there is something new as well what is this new so in this new concept you have to start your string by using minimum three double quotes one two three like this and now you can write your string so here i'm writing my name is Nitesh Kosik. You will see there is no difference. Just run this application and you will get the proper output on this console screen. Now, what is the difference? If you want to append a double quote on any particular word, then you can simply use it. Let's say I want to use it like this. So, if I will run this application, then you will see I'm having the double quote on this Nitesh that is the first name, right? Now, what will happen if I want to use this double quote on this entire name like this? Then immediately you will see we are getting the error and this is very strange. Why this error? This error is because of this new concept. As per this concept, the number of double quotes should be equal in the beginning and in the end of this particular string. But here this program is kind of confused. It is assuming that this double quote is basically used to end this particular string, right? So to avoid that, if you will put any kind of space over here, then you will see we are having a proper name and there is no error like that, right? That's how you can work with this concept. Now, if you want to use multiple lines over here, then you can also do that. Let's do it like this. So here I'm writing this, put the enter. I have put some dummy data over here and if I will run this application, then you will see we are getting the exact output on this console window. Now, instead of using these three, you can also use multiples. So I'm having four and because of the IntelliSense in Visual Studio, I'm automatically having one over here. So I'm having four double quotes in the beginning and four double quotes at the end. Run this application, it will work as it is. Let's come to the interesting part. What will happen if I will write something over here? Immediately you will see we are getting the error. As per this concept, if you are having some kind of string in a line and there are some double quotes in the beginning, then you must put all those double quotes at the end as well and we are not doing that over here because in the same line we are not using these four double quotes that is why we are getting the error but if i will remove it it will work properly let's come to another interesting part as well let's say here i'm just removing some spaces 
like this immediately you will see we are getting the error as per this error you will see we are getting the message as well it is saying line does not start with the same white space as the closing line of the row string literal as per this you have to use the same white space that you are using on the closing line it will work now if the closing line is over here and i'm having it like this then it will work right but make sure your content is not crossing the white space from this closing line if you will run this application you will see we will get the data exactly in this form and it is very useful for example if you are having some json let's search for google and here i'm writing dummy json that's the one i'm having see let's just copy this particular data and let's go back to the program and over here if i want to display this entire value then i can simply paste it what i will do is i will simply use the next tab and that's it let's run this application and let's see what will happen you will see we are getting the exact output on our console screen so that's the benefit of this new feature if you have to work with the previous one then you have to take care of all these slashes all these commas all these double quotes because to display the values as it is you have to use so many other things like using the double quote two times or using the slashes something like that but here as per this new concept you do not have to worry about anything else <laughs> you simply have to use these minimum three double quotes and it will work as per the need now let's talk about one last concept over here in this string value we can assign two special things as well first is the null and second is the empty which is string dot empty this one so if i will run this application now with this string dot empty we are not getting anything in the output because it is empty and if i'm using null and run this application let's see what is the output the output again is nothing so what is the difference in between them there is a very special difference this null is not an string but string dot empty is an string this string dot empty is the new instance of a string class but this null is not this null is something that we have already assigned in some previous data types as well and remember one more thing over here to assign the null values in a string you do not have to use the question mark you can assign it directly over here if you will notice what is this green line over here and this is coming because i have enabled nullable over here by default nullable is enabled in the csr programming language if i will just double click on this project name to open the cs pros file this one and here if i will just disable it save the changes like this close it then you will see that green line is gone now so this green line is coming from that particular place let's put it back enable like this so what is the difference in between null and string dot empty it is this null is just the value and if you are working with this null then you might get null reference exception but if you are working with the string dot empty then the string dot empty is a new instance of the string class and you will not get the null reference exception thank you for watching have a great day